Everybody knows RAM speed doesn't matter in games, right? 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 No? Right? Am I right? No? No? I'm, I'm not right? Oh. How's it going everyone? This is MindBlank and welcome back to my channel where today I decided to lay to rest all the ongoing speculation regarding DDR speeds and latencies and its correlation to performance in games, so frames per second. This whole air quotes theory has started with uh, DDR4 release and the subsequent performance review uh, reviews as well as the excellent videos that Digital Foundry put out on uh, DDR3 paired with slower Core i5 uh, and Core i7 CPUs like the 2500K and the 2600K. They did an excellent job but did not show how uh, RAM speeds actually scale with frames per second, so with performance in games. Spoiler alert, RAM speed does matter in CPU intensive games even if you're running a fast Core i5 or Core i7 CPU. And since most games that have come out in the last year, uh, last years are very too extremely some of them CPU dependent, you will more than often feel a performance boost by opting to go with faster RAM. I went ahead and tested with 16GB of Kingston HyperX Beast 2400MHz DDR3 memory, which I, I then scaled down to 2133MHz, 1866, 1600 and finally 1333 MHz. I included 1333 MHz because I personally know two people, uh, one running 8 gigabytes, the other 16 gigabytes of 1333 memory paired with a fast Core i5 CPU just because when they built the, the gaming rig they did not opt for fast RAM since they knew that it has no impact on performance. Uh, I normally test with the Core i7-4790K which is overclocked to 4.6 GHz but for this test I went ahead and chose a Core i5-4670K which I overclocked to uh, 4.5 GHz so nothing special and I paired it with a more down to earth uh, Earth GTX 970 which of course I have it overclocked at uh, 1520 MHz GPU core just because why not overclock the 970 it's free performance and it scales very well and by the way if you don't know how to I have a GPU overclocking tutorial on this uh, on this channel it's for both mobile GPUs and desktop GPUs Results are as expected, so if you're a non-believer then I hope this video changes your mind. And by the way, if you like this video and the content that I upload and you appreciate the time and effort that goes into making these videos, then uh, leave a comment, uh, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing as it greatly helps me keep dedicating time for YouTube. Before the test, I just want to mention that average FPS tells nothing, but instantaneous FPS actually tells you how enjoyable the game is, how you feel the game, how smooth it is. So keep be on the lookout for the instantaneous FPS on the MSI Afterburner uh, on-screen display, as well as the GPU utilization metric. Uh, the GPU utilization is like this. If the GPU is waiting on the CPU, which in turn uh, is waiting on slow RAM, the GPU utilization will drop for a split second and you will feel a stutter, a frame rate drop, a frame rate, uh, frame rate skip, call it whatever you want. So be on the lookout for that as well as it's very indicative. So that being said, on with the benchmarks. Alrighty then, so first runner up is The Witcher 3 and we are running maxed out except Hairworks which is completely completely off and I chose the the city area to test in because this is the most CPU intensive area in the game well along with other cities of course but this Novigrad and especially entering through this gate and through the market proves to be the most CPU intensive part uh, in the whole game. Not a lot of difference at the moment, but we are now entering the market area, which is 
easily the most CPU intensive uh, zone, the peak of the CPU intensive zone. As you can see for the 1333 and 1600 MHz uh, sides, the GPU utilization has already started to drop and right now we are actually entering the square which is the absolute peak and as you can see the 1333 MHz side is struggling and you are losing performance. Second game we are testing today is Rise of the Tomb Raider and we are using the following settings. It's uh, not maxed out as this uh, game actually requires a pretty beefy GPU but it's near uh, ultra settings so to say. And I've chosen Geothermal Valley because this part of the game actually requires uh, a lot of CPU power. Uh, you will see that especially if you're running with a high uh, dynamic foliage. Not very bad for slower RAM, but uh, I can see some drops below 99% GPU utilization, especially for the 1333 and 1600 MHz RAM. This area is actually pretty weird because uh, you actually return a few times later in the game and uh, it, it is actually even more CPU demanding than what you see here. Granted, the time of day does change when you each time you return to this valley. Taking a quick look at performance over here and the 1333 and 1600 MHz sides are actually dropping well below 99% uh, GPU utilization, definitely uh, lost performance there if you opt to go with a slower RAM. And of course GTA 5 which is running at ultra settings almost uh, except some uh, really demanding settings on uh, the advanced graphics tab. This is, as you all know, a very uh, CPU intensive game. I have chosen only this last part because uh, the car runs uh, through the city, there's a lot of traffic and uh, a lot of simulation and of course the CPU is involved to its, uh, to its maximum. Uh, the most interesting scene uh, here is actually when the black car hits the, the gas tank. Now, when that happens, performance actually drops even on 2400 MHz memory because the Core i5, even at uh, 4.5 GHz, I think can actually keep up with the, what the game is demanding from it. Something very weird that I encountered, encountered over here is that the slowest RAM, 1333, actually gives pretty nice performance and definitely better performance than 1600 and 1866. I don't know why, I think it's just a fluke. Fallout 4 at Ultra and this game is actually very known for scaling very well with faster RAM speeds and it doesn't disappoint, you can actually ski to see very nice and linear scale between all RAM types. And Far Cry Primal at Ultra settings and this game was included just to show you guys that not all games actually benefit from having faster RAM. Far Cry Prim uh, Primal with its built-in benchmark doesn't seem to care if it's running on 13, 33 MHz or 2400 MHz or even faster. As you can see, it mainly doesn't budge the CPU, the GPU utilization from 99%. And I've also, uh, you, you cannot see when the benchmark uh, ends, but the results are uh, absolutely identical. Same minimum frame rate, same average, same maximum. So that was it guys, I really hope you liked the video and you learned something new from it. I hope it helps you out, if you have questions please leave them in the comments. Uh, thumb the video up if you liked it and consider subscribing. Thank you for watching, bye bye.